He's in high school and he's changing the world. Rekshith Sirimbansen is the founder of Unlimited Potential, which assists researchers and medical doctors to find cures and fosters innovation in prosthetics, bionics, orthopedics, musculoskeletal research. Besides that, the lifeblood behind Unlimited Potential is a collection of high school volunteers from across the Pacific Northwest. He is fundraising for the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center to help improve immunotherapy against cancer among the musculoskeletal system. He helps create STEM awareness inside his community, has published scientific research about muscle soreness and lateral ligament ankle injuries in basketball, and he has worked several medical internships. But that's not all. Rocky is a Washington School student athlete ambassador and plays varsity basketball and district level track and field. Please welcome Rocky. Hi, thank you for having me. So many people, especially older adults, have passions and interests to improve a situation. Why you, and what was it that pushed you to personally take action in these areas? Yeah, so as you said, uh, I play varsity basketball, and I've been playing for the past three years. And I really got introduced to, you know, I was always interested in medicine and biology, like high school biology, my classes. And I, in 2021, I suffered a grade two ankle sprain during the season. And so that basically took me out of, it was near the end of the season. So it took me out of the playoffs. And then I was really frustrated that how I, like that I missed time when I was away from the team and I couldn't really play sports, which is what I love to do. And this really was an eye-opening experience for me because I kind of fell into the world of a lot of people who don't have the opportunity to play sports and be active like I like to do. And as many people like to do because I feel like sports is one of the biggest unifiers and hobbies of everyone in, around the world. So from that, I really got interested in um, learning more about, you know, what are sports medicine and kind of what's being done in the fields right now to help these people who cannot play sports or be active due to disabilities or disformities and those who like the elderly or um, who need, you know, extra help. So just staying fit and active and having maintaining an active lifestyle, because I think that's also very important. And so I really got the idea there. To, you know, as a as a high schooler, I can't really go in there and do anything, right? So mm -hmm. the best way for me is to kind of raise awareness in my community of the what's going on and the research. And so through that, I created my foundation. So it's a nonprofit called Enable Up, and Up stands for Unlimited Potential. So I feel like everyone has potential inside them, and I really want to unlock it through helping fund research. So what we do at Up is we do micro campaigns, which are basically fundraisers of around $5,000. We try to finish these over the course of like two months. Um, we have a group of high schoolers from around the United States. So we have, we're in Washington, but I have hundreds of other volunteers from around the, around the country, full-time and part-time helping to raise awareness in their specific community, because I think that's really beneficial when you go from telling your neighbor and your neighbor tells their friends and they tell their parents and they tell. So it's just like, a great way to connect and spread the message around to everyone. And so we really fundraise towards sports medicine research and through like prosthetics and kind of diseases like bone sarcoma cancer. And so we've completed around, we've raised around $30,000 till date. And we've completed fundraisers for Seattle Children's here in Washington, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center. And right now we're working with uh, Special Olympics. So it's kind of a company that works with those who are want to play sports, but you know they can't do to disform their disabilities, and so they really make that possible. So we're also right now we're working with them to start another fundraiser there. Where did this empathy come from? I think so. As uh, in ninth grade and tenth grade, I was tutoring for a company called World Relief Organization, and what they do is they take refugees from Afghanistan and now. Ukraine um, and like the children. So 
they get displaced here to the United States and to Washington in specific because there's like a military base here. And so those those kids get kind of put into an awkward situation where they're having, having to go to school when they don't know the language, they don't know the education system is very different. And so I was working with World Relief to help tutor these kids at first. So just working with them, not only tutoring, but, you know, being like a friend and supportive, mm-hmm. helping them, talking to them, just being you know, there for them because, you know, it's a very hard time, especially for kids. It's hard for them to express that. So just working with them on their schoolwork and then talking and, you know, just making friends. And then after that, that kind of gave me the, I guess, the, the empathy of, you know, understanding how to really help people, how I can. And it really made me like introspectively think, how can I help others? Because I have, I mean, I'm very fortunate in a lot of things. So, and there's a lot of people who are not. So how can I use what I have been given to help other people? And what were your first steps into diving into this specific study? Although you did say a little bit about it, but still, to take all this action that you have done, you didn't do this alone, and you must have had some support somewhere. Or if you did it, then you're even more of a badass than I thought. (laughs) So talk about those first steps and how... When you first came up with this idea, how difficult was that to say, hey, this is what I want to do? Because, you know, some people might look at you and say, well, you know, what do you know, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a huge barrier at first, I think. So I really started up back in like 2021. So that was almost two years ago. And it was it was hard to get, you know, involved with these big hospitals like Seattle Children's because. You know, they're big institutions and it's not, you can't really just like get involved. So I had to kind of build credentials and I had to really learn more about the field of sports medicine. So I did that through like the internships. I had a summer internship at Brown University. So that was really helpful kind of just to learn as well, like really what's going on in the field. And, you know, my parents really helped me to get this started to reaching out to people. And I had to reach out to a lot of people and there was more no's than yeses, but once I kind of got the ball rolling, it really has been going really strong now. And so I also got my a lot of my um, kids from my high school to help volunteer at first to raise funds and spread the message. And then through this, you know, I have more people in, in the United States, like in New York and in Texas, as well as in India, where my grandparents live and where I was born. So really like a huge support system from around the world really helped me. So, you know, at, at first it was hard, but it took persistence and effort and people can say, you know, like, why you, but then lots of people say, why not you, you know what I'm saying? So that's exactly. kind of how. Do you hope that someday you will become an orthopedic surgeon or will that actually limit what you're doing or what you want to achieve? Yeah. So my, I mean, career goal is definitely an orthopedic surgeon, orthopedic doctor, because I'm really uh, want to help people. So, you know, that's what I'm doing with the fundraising. And if I can get in the field myself and actually help people, that would be a dream come true for me. And my ultimate goal really with this foundation and everything that I'm doing is in like 2040, 2050 to have no wheelchairs and everyone's able to really be equal in the form of sports and movement. And everyone's able to live an active lifestyle and kind of do what they want. So if they want to play a certain sport, they should be able to do that. And I'm really working. um, So I, as you said, I was on, I'm on the Washington board of student ambassadors for the LEAP program. And it's basically 10 students around Washington state. And we work with the uh, WIAA, which is a board that basically organizes all high school sports in Washington. And so we work with them kind of in board meetings and sit with them, talk to them about kind of rule changes and stuff like that, setting up events and really bringing the problems of the you know, the students, like the, it's a new perspective for them to see it from from us, the actual athletes. So I also get, you know, work to talk to them about there's these kids. So with Special Olympics, they're not really recognized as a high level like uh, sport. They're like not recognized as like a club sport. So I'm trying to, you know, raise awareness about this and change, you know, bring change in the community. And through my WIAA board position, I think I have a really good I guess, access into the to kind of the those who make the rules so I can really bring forth my vision and the public's 
of voices. Mm. So tell us about the cancers that worry you. You mentioned clear cell sarcoma and Ewing sarcoma that affect teens and young adults. How were you introduced to this? And what type of research was out there before you teamed up with Fred Hutchison Cancer Center? Yeah, so I've worked with so with Fred Hutchison. We were working for, because they're like a cancer research institute. So I wanted to kind of narrow this down to more related to the body and sports medicine. So bone sarcoma cancer was a great leverage there. And I really just helped to raise awareness about this. So I went into Fred Hutchinson, like into their hospital and learned from the doctors themselves and the researchers kind of the what, what bone sarc- sarcoma cancer is, what they're doing at Fred Hutch and how they're researching to find a cure for this. Um, and my knowledge, I went with a lot of my volunteers from up and we really learned, I guess, learning what we're actually fundraising towards is much more beneficial because it's much easier to spread awareness and like answer the question. So if you bring a fundraiser to someone, they say, why should I donate? Or what's my, what's my money going to do? And being able to answer that question as through understanding the research and bringing forth these points of how this is a really important thing and what they're doing. So what your money is going to go towards this research and this is helping to find a cure for this cancer. And so that's really what I was working, working with Fred Hutchinson to better understand the research. And then along with that, at Seattle Children's, we were working for prosthetics fundraising. So those who are born with a disformity, maybe they have to amputate their arm or leg and then getting a prosthetic or a bionic to help them you know, regain this limb and control. And so fundraising towards the creation and research of you know, making, this, making these more accessible to people because I think the problem right now is they're very expensive and not yeah. easily accessible. So fundraising towards that to make these more, I guess, simpler and widespread to that's not just something where it's like in a movie like as Iron Man, but everyone, you know, if they want one, they can go and get it. But boy, would it be cool to wear an Iron Man suit. <laughs> so where did you find the time to actually play basketball and participate in track and field, study and finish high school and fundraise for your and run your organizations, <laughs> let alone interning, writing scientific research. I mean, I'm exhausted just saying that. <laughs> yeah. So I have basketball in the winter and then track and field in the spring. So a lot of my work is really, I tried to, you know, planning definitely and working with the fact that I have a lot of volunteers really helps me because we can split the work in like up in fundraising. But we can really split the work evenly when it's not really a huge burden. So, you know, starting the fun, the foundation was hard, but now that I have a big base of people behind my back, I think it's much, much more easier. So I have different chapters in here in Washington. We have like a Seattle chapter and then different like cities here. So kind of more spread out and each person runs their, their community basically for the fundraisers. I think really the way I was able to manage all of this stuff is really through planning and other and support from other people. And I couldn't have done it without without them. The last couple of years have put a strain on our health systems worldwide, not just in our countries, I'm in Canada, forcing many of the orthopedic appointments to be canceled and so and same with the surgeries, knee surgeries and whatnot. Has this helped or hindered your efforts in doing what you're doing here with this? Yeah, so a specific example is so I've been working with Seattle Children's for the past year, year and a half, and their kind of patients have increased dramatically from before COVID and then after COVID. The it's just really spiked way up, and they are at really at capacity right now. And so I think this has obviously caused a problem, an issue that there's like an overflow. But I think they're expanding, and this like fundraising and stuff like that is really helping them because you know they have more allocated funds to to help to foster all of these people who need different surgeries, various surgeries that they couldn't get during the COVID times. Um, yeah. And that has to vary from state to state, does it? Depending on, as I know it varies here, province to province on wait times and accessibility and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. Depending on the hospital. So Fred Hutch here is a great uh, cancer it's one of the biggest cancer research institutes here in Washington. And then 
Seattle Children's as an actual hospital is one of the is the biggest children's hospital here in Washington. And people come from like Idaho and Oregon, which are like neighboring states, and they always they come here to Seattle Children's just because it's you know one of the best hospitals around. And so this has really not caused an overflux in their their patient numbers just due to the inavailability during COVID. And then now that they're available, it's just spiked up. And I think working with them to help with raising awareness, like and just fundraising money to just help them because they need you know, more resources to allocate for everyone. And let's face it, mobility is everything. Prosthetics are so essential for, you know, especially for those waiting for surgery, which here in Alberta can be two years, or who have injuries that soft tissue injuries that can't be fixed, but you still can't really walk on them. So what are the improvements that you've seen in prosthetics already in the last few years? And where, besides, you know, I guess the Iron Man suit would be the perfect future. <laughs> yeah. So they're developing something called an exoskeleton, which is basically a something that you wear that can really just help you be mobile. And I guess simply put over the past like five to 10 years, the research has mainly been, how can I make this affordable and more accessible? And then along with that, how can I maximize maximize this, the materials and the resource being put into this, how can I maximize to mass produce these bionics and prosthetics? So my research, I guess my fundraising towards Seattle Children's is really surrounding this. And so I got, I looked into, you know, how they're helping these patients. So they, each patient will have like a different diagnosis. So this is what it's what makes it much harder to kind of create these prosthetics and bionics because everyone is different in terms of their diagnosis. So I think really what has been done and what is needed to be done is surrounding that portability and effect like the effectiveness of the amount of time and resource that they're putting into you know, kind of to mass produce this and make it more of a widespread widespread thing instead of just like a you know something that only rich people can afford to yeah. get. Yeah. Well, affordability is huge. And with, there are some prosthetics, knee braces, like you can get different levels of them. And some of them can be customized, which can cost you through the roof. But regardless of what country, I mean, whether you're in Canada or the US, definitely the prosthetics are probably out of pocket. I know they're out of pocket here. So I can't even venture to guess how much custom brace would be for some things but that just even the mid-level braces are pretty expensive it would be fantastic to get those costs brought down how can other americans or people around the world help you keep this momentum going what are your needs to keep this uh future venture yeah so i'm publishing a book right now surrounding kind of the various you know research I'm not surprised behind, <laughs> yeah. sorry <laughs> the research is behind like all basically all of surrounding the research in prosthetics bionics um the exoskeleton that we're talking about and then various different new surgeries like car t-cell therapy surgeries in like muscle dystrophy and bone sarcoma cancer stuff like that and then also so that's really for researchers and then also for the everyday person so i'm talking about in the book, different supplements that you can take to help increase like muscle growth or recovery times after workouts or exercise. And then like different yoga poses that you can do just to keep yourself fit and active and reduce and reduce long-term health health issues through these various yoga poses that you can do every day for those who are elderly and those just an average person. And the book really, I think, is going to be a great resource for people just putting everything into one, one kind of one kind of book that you can instead of like looking around the internet and and, and scourging for different things different what's better what can I take what's the best exercise and stretch and so I'm kind of putting that into a book for everyone and I think through through reading this and through understanding more and raising awareness to your community and people around you is really the biggest thing that you can do is raise awareness is what is what our foundation is really about and to help these fundraisers by even one dollar by every person could be up to a million dollars right so mm. every dollar really counts every cent counts that you put into this so it's not something where you know i can't oh i don't have 
you know, I don't want to just donate a dollar because I don't want to feel bad. But I mean, every cent really counts towards a bigger goal. And that goal is enabling equality in terms of the athletic field and making everyone live an active lifestyle. So as I said before, 2040, 2050, we have no wheelchairs and everyone is really equal, equalized and athletic excellence is democratized for everyone around. And and really, right now, a lot of people will look in the mirror and say, well, I'm physically healthy, I'm young, I don't have to worry, or even if it doesn't matter my age, I'm an athlete, I, you know, but even if you're an athlete, you get hurt. I mean, if you're watching the Stanley Cup playoffs, it's brutal. (laughs) Football is brutal. Basketball can be brutal. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can walk down an icy staircase and and break your leg and then next thing you know you need a prosthetic so (laughs) this is really 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 encouraging to see this happening thank you so much rocky for being my guest i will do anything i can to help push this out for you so yeah so my website is enableup.org and so there we have, I have more stuff about me and kind of our volunteers and what we do uh, to some fundraisers. So some of the research papers I've done are published online to some journals. So that's also there if you viewers want to look at that. Thank you so much.